let's open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22 verse 25 and verse 33 Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22 says the following wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord I want us to underline first of all that God does not say for women to submit to men and all the women said Amen. this is only for wives so if you ain't got a husband you don't need to submit to no men unless you're still living with your dad then you gotta submit to your dad amen amen and all the fathers said amen so this is wives submit to your own husbands now you may say but my husband is not a good husband to submit to and it says to submit to him as to the Lord your husband might, might, might not be acting like the Lord but if you submit to him as though he is Jesus Christ you will be shocked with how God can change him to be more like Jesus Christ that means you don't honor him in the way he is you honor him at what you want him to be as a woman you have a power to change your husband by honoring him into the person you want him to be not browbeating you know pushing him trying to uh, put him into this mold that you created but honoring him to be that person that God created him to be somebody say amen all the husbands said amen if we scroll down a little bit later and we see verse 25 it says husbands any husbands we have in the house this morning afternoon okay all right husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church now I genuinely believe that no woman will have a problem submitting to a man who loves her the way Christ loved the church Many times people say, well, the Bible says women submit to your husbands and everything. But the harder job is not to submit. The harder job is for men to love their wives, not as they love themselves, but as Jesus loved the church. And Jesus died for the church. Jesus gave his life for the church and Jesus continues to live for the church. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and he gave himself for her and then verse 33 nevertheless let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself so Paul Paul now lowers the standard he says uh, this is the standard uh, like this is what to aim for love your wife as Jesus loved the church he said but I know where all you guys are at he said let's start with this why don't you just start with loving your wife first as you love yourself and then let's build toward loving her as Jesus loved the church he almost like lowers the standard because he knows where all the dudes are at and so he's like let's start with that and then let's just start going slowly up to the level where God wants us to be let love yourself as you would love let you love your wife as you would love yourself and let each wife see that she respects her husband so the primary needs of every man number one is honor and respect honor and respect every husband wants to be first honored the husband does not need to feel loved he needs to know he's honored the way a husband feels loved is if he knows he's honored that means you don't need to tell him that you love him for him to know that you love him respect him and a lot of women what they give to their husbands is the things they want their husbands to give to them they give them this emotional you know smoochy stuff like man you darling i love you and everything that's not what the husbands need the most the bible says that the wife is supposed to give their husband respect meaning men's love language for men to know his love is when you honor him amen the second thing that every husband needs is sex amen He's not a pervert he's not just a, a person who struggles with lust he doesn't need prayer line he needs sex that means as a woman you have to understand men are visual if, if you're a wife you have to understand men are visual so with that knowledge you have to let the Lord lead you in what you're supposed to do with that knowledge secondly you have to understand as a woman you have to be more sexual than you feel if you want your husband to be more verbal than you feel 
A lot of husbands, they're not very vocal. A lot of husbands, they're not very communicative. The same way a lot of wives are very, very modest when it comes to their sexuality. And so with your husband, you have to understand that, that it's not just his, it's not just his want, it's also his need. The third need that every husband has, and that is the shared activity. Men enjoy and that's when the men open up is when you have an activity with them and walking in the park holding hands and talking about the weather is not an activity for a man. Men's activity is like you know doing something together, breaking something together, fixing something together, killing something together, catching something together, building something together. That is a shared activity. For me I enjoy the times when when I would do something and my wife alongside is with me doing that. She doesn't have to do exactly the same thing but being present there that's when I open up. If your man doesn't speak to you find out what he enjoys doing and then pretend that you enjoy doing that do it with him you will be surprised he won't shut up and don't think that that activity is walking in the park now if you have a husband that enjoys walking in the park and he looks forward to that God bless you but he's a little bit weird most of the guys do not enjoy just those kind of aimless activities most guys like things that there's at the end you can see this is done this is what we accomplished this is what we did not do and when a man has a woman that's involved with him in those areas this is when he opens up the shared activity is a very important need that every man has and the fourth one is support at home it's, it doesn't mean that your the wife has to because we have now wives they work full time it doesn't mean that you have to cook you know and clean and everything but that you show support at home amen now every woman's needs, four major primary needs. Number one is security. And I decoded what security is because, you know, when I found out that my wife's number one need is security, I felt very comfortable with it because I have locks installed in our house. So I'm like, we got it. She's secure. We have an alarm in our house, so that's good. She's secure. But that is not the kind of security that every wife needs. The security for a woman is spelled by two words. Sensitivity I means she wants to know that you're sensitive with her. And a lot of men, sensitivity is, is, is very, comes very impossible for us. It has to be sometimes we need to be reminded to be sensitive. Because as guys, we can be very straightforward. We can be very blunt. And women, they need you to be sensitive with them. Uh, in other words, nice. Sensitive and sacrificial. In other words, it's okay to spoil your wife. Actually, I think it's supposed to be a rule. To spoil your wife especially if you are a man you're frugal every woman usually has an obsession and a weakness for some it's purses for some it's jewelry for some it's like the stuff with their hair or they're doing their nails and it's so expensive you can buy three cars and four houses after you find out how much they spend on nails and their hair and all the eyelashes and all of that stuff or their clothes so each woman has a weakness and that's completely normal. The problem with us as guys is that what we do many times is we come to a woman and we find out that she really likes those shoes and she has 60 pairs of them. And so instead of giving her a lecture, what we do is we give her a lecture about you shouldn't be hoarding. Never tell that to your wife. If she wants 57th pair of sneakers, you say, babe, you go for it but can we do one thing for every pair you buy why don't you give one pair away and the woman's like oh my goodness that is a brilliant idea I'll be buying them every week <laughs> when I was when we just got married I struggled with this area because I was very frugal and I would discipline we would have these talks where I would tell my wife you need to cut back on all of that you need to you, you, you can't be buying those shoes for my wife it's the shoes you, you don't need that hat. You don't need those nails. I'm like, my nails are just fine. Your nails will be just fine. I'm like, I can dye it for you. I take a marker and paint it for you. You don't need to pay 50 bucks for that or 60 bucks. And I realized, you know what? D divorces are more expensive. Be nice. Be generous. Woman feels, and a lot of times as guys, we do that when we date them. We broke like a joke, but we find those $20 or something and we spoil them. 
and then when we get married we become like Dave Ramsey <laughs> become so frugal we become so like you can't do this no 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 you can't do this we need to save it's interesting how you you won her heart because you were generous with her never stop being generous with your wife be stingy with yourself but always be generous with your spouse that's how she feels secure it's not about the money it's not about the shoes it's not about the purses it's about that she sees it's a sacrifice she sees Jesus in you. Blood is gushing out of your hands, out of your side because you're giving your last thing for her enjoyment. But this is how she feels loved. <laughs> Hallelujah, my God. Number two is non-sexual affection. And this is a physical affection that you render to your wife that it's a physical touch. All the women, they need physical touch. I'm not talking about punching. I'm not talking about pushing. I'm not talking about pinching. And I'm not talking about giving her that bear hug where she's gonna die. Like, like you do it on, you know, on a football field and on a basketball court or you do it with your buddies. I'm talking about that gentle, that non-sexual. And I'm not talking about it has to lead to something. It has to lead to absolutely nothing. Amen. When I heard that first time, another, I started to apply that. I forget to do it, apply that, but I've been really just reminding myself. And what I like to do it is that when my wife is like in the kitchen, she's doing something or, or someone else, to come up just from behind her, give her just a really tender hug from the back, kiss her on the cheek for just about five, six seconds, and then just walk away. That woman cannot stop thinking about what just happened for next four hours. Husbands try that no longer than five seconds because if you do longer you might say stuff that's wrong and stuff So but if you just just quickly and just just walk away, she's like, what was that for? You're like, well, that's up to you to figure it out It's because I te amo. I love you <laughs> Guys try that today You never know where that might lead <laughs> number three honest communication and every woman wants she, she's like this cia interrogative person she wants details the problem is guys is we give headlines i met with bob how was it great but you know women they, they want details and so what we encourage for us as men is to try to go into details where did you meet bob did you come on time did he came on time did you get water without ice or was it with ice what did you order out of that menu? Who paid for that meal? What did Bob talk about? Did you guys talk about me? <laughs> what did you feel about when Bob said that to you? At least five minutes, go in and especially you start talking about feelings. And next thing you know, a woman, if she feels that she's a part of the life with you, when you jo don't just give her the headlines, but we give the details because it draws her in. And a lot of men, what we do is we're like, well, I don't feel like talking. What would, she, what would happen if she would react to sex the way you react to talking? Well, the reason why many women are not sexual toward their husbands is because their husbands are not communicative toward their wives. It doesn't come naturally for women to be more sexual. They're, they're more reserved in this area. The same way it doesn't come naturally for men to be very expressive in their talk. And therefore we have to take a leap of faith. And the wives have to also take a leap of faith. Can somebody say amen? And number four is the, the wives, they want their husbands to be leaders at home. That does not mean that you have to be a pastor, uh, a title of a pastor. It means that you have to lead her. That means you have to lead the family. That means that you might not even manage the, the finances. You might even make less money than your wife. It doesn't matter, but that in the home, you are the leader. You're the one that, that knows who you are in Christ. And you don't have to know every scripture in the Bible to be a leader in your home. You just have to love Jesus with all your heart the way you love Jesus and that's enough and follow and lead them and they will follow you can somebody say amen, amen. 